Welcome back. Uh, as I said before, coming to Comic-Con gives you the chance to encounter people you probably wouldn't encounter in any other moment of your life, just so you can tell them how much the stun, stuff that they've done has meant to you. This is definitely one of those moments, man. I have never thought I'd be able to do this, but give it up for the good doctor and the good doctor's good doctor. Give it up for... <laughs> I'm sorry, this is very emotional for me. Stephen Boffin and Peter Capaldi, ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> This is a big deal for me. One of my favorite hours of programming in the history of television is the school reunion episode back in the tenant run. Because I was a fan of who, when I was a kid, it was on Channel 9 where I lived and stuff. And when Sarah Jane Smith came back, I wept. I've watched that episode so often. Uh, it, out of sync with the rest of the run. Uh, it respected to nothing. Sometimes I'll just wake up, finish my work, and just watch it because it's so beautifully put together. So poignant, man. Well, thank you, but neither of us were remotely involved you with that. You weren't on that uh, one? Yeah, no. not. What not season did you come on? Uh, I, joined, uh, I started with Matt Smith, and uh, obviously Peter started with Peter. <laughs> well, obviously I knew Peter was there. Boy, I feel like a... No, Dick. that's all right. I agree with you. It's a fantastic episode. It is episode. a fantastic episode. It is a beautiful well, episode. Well, I really have nothing left to talk about. So okay, so we'll see you. That was really nice. I, I hope you can tell us some more shows that we didn't make that you like. Uh, that uh, there was great. an episode of The Muppets, which I thought was yeah. amazing. I have a similar name, but that's where the connection ends. <laughs> yes. Um, all right, let's go in a bunch of different directions then. Uh, this show uh, you've, you've come to define in, uh, in a, over the course of your run, which apparently wasn't the episode I was talking about. Yeah. But, uh, but also there's another show called uh, Sherlock, which you had a thing or two to do with. Yes. Uh, forthcoming, you have a new show coming up that everyone's excited about, which meant that you were going to leave this show and you're going over to a new place. Uh, no? No, no, I mean, I'm not leaving this show to, to do Dracula. I'm just, uh, it just came to the end of my time and uh, the, the two of us are leaving. And... Uh, Mark and I are going to do a, a version of Dracula at some point fairly soon. But I mean, uh, we haven't really started working on it yet. We've been doing a lot of interviews about it, which is surreal, given we haven't written a single word. So it's slightly hard to promote. <laughs> what is it like when you have to come to that moment as a creator where you're like, both of you, where you're like, okay, I've, I think I've done enough, I'm going to step away. And is there a gut check where you're like, well, this is safe and comfortable and wonderful, why would I walk away from this? Oh, it's a tough one, isn't it, Peter? I think, I mean, I, I, I decided, I mean, I love Doctor Who. I've loved Doctor Who since I was a kid and used to write fan letters and stuff like that. And so becoming Doctor Who was an amazing thing. Um, but I suddenly realized that the actual amount of work involved, we do like kind of 10 months a year, every day for you know, 12 hours a day. I thought, I can't keep doing this to the best of my ability. And I didn't ever want to just phone it in. I didn't ever want to just be someone who just turned up for the money. I wanted to be somebody who did it because they loved it. So I thought, well, I, I, I want to leave while I, I, I think I'm still, it's, I'm still feeling it. Uh, and also Stephen was leaving as well. Stephen's written some of the most extraordinary uh, television programs ever. And I've been lucky to be involved in them. And, and what he's done with Doctor Who has been amazing. And I thought, well, you know, that's, he's, he's kind of my guy. So uh, I, I thought it was the right time to go. Plus, there hadn't been any episodes like School Reunion for a while. So we thought, you know, I've got it. Let's go. I'm going to be eating that for the rest of my life. Um, <laughs> if I have anything to do with it. <laughs> um, for me, I know me. I'm a chicken shit at heart. I have no moral core. Yeah. If something was working for me, I'd stick with it. Nothing for you? You feel like, no, it's time to well, journey I mean, forward? I have been, I've been writing Doctor Who stories for 12 years. Yeah. Uh, and I've been uh, sort of running the show since 2009. Uh, so, I certainly, it's not... It's the best job I've ever had or ever will have. It's not the only job I'll ever want. I want to do other things. And the thing about Doctor Who is, as Peter says, is it's all consuming, apart from the bits when I'm doing Sherlock. You know, it's, it, it, it fills the sky. You worry about it. You stress about it every single day. So since I, and I, I've had several days now where I've not been stressing about Doctor Who. And that's quite nice. I'll never love anything more but I, I can't keep working like this. That's what it comes down to. I mean, Stephen usually walks around looking like he's about to have a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. And it's great, because now he just looks like he's about to have a stroke. <laughs> so that's a big improvement. <laughs> Uh, before Who came into your life, and you've been in a few permutations, you worked up to Who, there was the Torchwood, there was this, there was that, and then before you became Doctor yeah. Who. Um, but one of uh, your best known performances, and one that I absolutely loved as a true Bulgarian, 
was Malcolm in, oh, in the yeah. thick of it. Yeah, yeah, in the thick of it, yeah, So yeah. I remember when they announced, I was like, oh my God, we're gonna get the first Doctor Who who curses a blue streak. Yeah, yeah, I haven't sworn for like four years. Because of that? Since I became Doctor Who, I thought it was very inappropriate, but hey, I've just left. So now Peter. I can really curse. You can don't, I do it now? No, you do, can you I do my first no, post? Please! Oh Christmas. my God, give it up Christmas, for him! Let him curse, now. ladies and gentlemen! Bring back Malcolm Tucker just for a moment. The moment Jody comes on screen, you're allowed to swear again. <laughs> Not until then. <laughs> I've still got, I'm on Christmas Day, so yeah. I can't. Once on Boxing Day, you'll hear me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll call you. I'll call you. Please. I'm Not as a response to Jody, by the way, <laughs> whom we think is absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about that real quick. They announced uh, last week yeah. to great joy across great the joy, internet yeah. uh, that the 13th Doctor is yeah. going to be. Uh, Jodie Whittaker, yeah. who I know from, uh, she was in Venus with Peter O'Toole. Mm. I loved her in that movie. She was in Attack the Block. She was in uh, Broadchurch. Yeah. Um, I'm telling you guys what you yeah. are already. Yeah. Did you, you were leaving, were you involved in that? Were you like, uh, by the way, before I leave, make the next Doctor a lady? No, I like, wasn't. Uh, I, uh, I knew uh, Chris's plan uh, from a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, but I wasn't involved in his choice. But I didn't know who he'd chosen until the Friday before the announcement. And I, because I didn't want to know before Peter knew. Uh, the rule was, you have to tell Peter first, then you tell me. Uh, because it's, it's Peter's job, not right. mine. Um, so, but I think, I think she's a, a wonderful choice. And I think what's more wonderful is despite a lot of people in the press claiming there's been some big backlash among Doctor Who fans, there hasn't. No. Doctor Who fans have not only welcomed the idea of Jodie Whittaker playing the Doctor, they don't even go around saying, gosh, a woman Doctor Who. They just say one of the best actors of their generation is taking on Doctor Who again. Oh, yeah. Isn't that brilliant? That's what they've said. There has been no backlash except for one horrible spotty fat man in his basement typing. And I apologize for uh, that yeah. already, so get off my back. But she is going to be sensational. She's been she I spoke to her last week. And she's Did you? Is there yeah. a, a who conversation? A, a, a well, it's so, you know, it's great because there are, uh, there are only a very few of us who have actually played this role and it's unique and the pressures of it are unique and the stresses and the joys of it are unique. So uh, I hope we're going to be able to stay in touch. And I, I mean, David Tennant and Matt Smith have been fabulous to me. They've been such a great, because some days things can become overpowering. And you say, who can I talk to about this? Who understands it? And those guys do. So I hope we'll be able to do that with Jody too. But can I just say that it was Stephen who really uh, laid the ground uh, for this gender transformation. In, uh, we have a, a, an evil character called the Master, who he transformed into Missy the Mistress, played uh, beautifully by Michelle Gomez. So, so Stephen has, has done all this already. Uh, so the idea of a gender switch really comes from Stephen. Um, you guys have uh, spent some time together on the show, uh, you longer than he was there. What's the, give me one emotional moment that you'll always carry with you moving forward. Like, ah, oh, that was, when I think about Doctor Who, that's what I think about. From your run, I'm sure over the course of the show you have emotional moments you weren't involved with, but for you, for your period there. You know when you said your favorite episode was School Reunion? Yes. Uh, yeah, that was, that's what got me. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, say uh, me. Um, well, I think there's, uh, you know, every day there's something amazing and magical and Doctor. But we did one, there was a day that we shot, we were in London at St. Paul's Cathedral, you know, where we filmed uh, Cybermen emerging, you know, robotic men emerging from, the, from, from this, from, 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 from Sir Christopher Wren's masterpiece. Uh, and they let us inside, and I, I, I got inside and saw like 12 Cybermen relaxing inside the nave of Sir Christopher Wren's gothic masterpiece uh, where the public aren't allowed. And I thought, that's pretty fab. This is pretty fab. Something you'll take with you forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you, uh, going forward, uh, will you work together again? I'm not saying, hey, you're going to put him in the thing, but are you going to put him in oh, the I'd love to work with Stephen. Oh, no, yeah, I'm very, point. very much hopefully yeah. working with Peter, yeah. uh, Peter again. In fact, I, I cast Peter as the doctor because I'd always wanted to work with him. And I thought, you know what? You know what I could do here? I could just put him in Doctor Who and that would happen. Oh, that's so, really sweet. <laughs> so that's the way it worked. We didn't, yeah, we, didn't, we didn't really consider anyone else. Well, that's really, but we're thinking of that, uh, you know, maybe doing a thing, maybe opening like Walmarts and stuff like that together. I could come dressed as the Doctor. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Wall. Dr. Wall. Yeah. Uh, and Stephen could come dressed as like a Zygon or a yeah. monster and stuff. We can make some money that way. Yeah. Just like the TARDIS, man. Walmarts are way bigger inside than they look from the outside. <laughs> Give it up for the boys from Doctor Who, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah.